Hello, this, uh, this short lecture will be on sample size. Um, so we want to be aware of um, how many respondents, what our sample size should be as we move forward to do our research. And there's going to be two different methods that we'll uh, mention, talk about here. Uh, that can help us. So one would be the rule of thumb that we use uh, where we have five responses for every item that's on our instrument that we're using to collect data. Um, so um, if you have 30 items, and even if you're doing multiple treatments, you need to treat each item for each treatment. So if you have two different treatments and I have 30 items, that means I've got um, a total of 60 items. So five times 60 would be 300. That would be my, my, my sample size minimum. Um, so this method here does not really take into account any, anything about the sample um, or anything about your test parameters, but it's just a general rule for sample size that you would need. So, um, so five respondents for every item, uh, minimum of 100. So if you only have five items, still collect at least 100 responses. Now, this will give you enough power to do pretty much anything that you want to do statistically to the data set. So if you have a very complex structural equation where you're measuring lots and lots of different things, um, then you need a lot of power. So for every every everything that you're measuring, uh, everything that you're estimating, each coefficient you're estimating takes a degree of freedom away. And so you want to be able to have enough power to enough enough degrees of freedom to be able to measure everything that you want. So, um, so this though will give you the robustness that you need uh, uh, for for your study. Um, there are times when you may do a pilot study or something with limited data. So uh, this would be for a full full on study that would. Uh, you know, it'd give you all the power that you would need. Um, this does not, though, include things that, like pre-testing that you would use and things of that nature. So this would be your final data set that you would that would you would want to want to use. Okay, so the five, the rule of five, five responses for every item. Don't that would be a good thing to remember. There's another uh, method called the uh, confidence interval method of uh, calculating sample size, and it's specified uh, by by here where you use a z-score and then you use information relating to your sample. Okay, so there's actually three things that are involved here in order to calculate this n or sample size. Um, so we have n, we have z, which is called the standardized coefficient confidence interval. It's the alpha, all right? So remember, like if you have these alpha of 0.05, um, then it's going to be 1.96. So these are z standardized z scores, uh, and it's going to be squared in there. So don't forget that little that, that little square there. If you have a more restrictive um, alpha, then you're going to need a larger sample, and these numbers are going to be larger. So it's the, the z's that correspond with the alpha that you choose that gets put into there. The standard deviation here is uh, some type of an estimate of variability um, that we have uh, given the population. So if you don't know what this is, okay, so and most of the time we don't. Most of the time, we do not know what this is in advance. But if you don't know what this is, or you don't have prior data to, to give you this, then input 0.5, OK? Use 0.5. This will give you the most uh, conservative estimate. It'll give you the largest sample uh, that you should have. OK, so just, just do that. And as a general rule, honestly, if you want to just put 0.5 in no matter what, then that'll be, uh, that won't be bad, okay? The last component is this E, which is the margin of error that you are willing to accept from sampling error, okay? And so, um, so we'll have some examples here uh, that we'll show in ju just a moment. Uh, just as, again, some illustrations here, we talk about sample accuracy. Uh, 
We, we know that uh, the population here, we, we, we assume that our sample is drawn from our population. However, this is never really fully the case that there's like our sample is never perfectly going to reflect the population of interest. There may be um, individuals that are outside here that are unique that we don't capture as a result of the sample that we have. There's certainly people that we capture here that are not in our intended population of interest and we should really discard their responses, right? We should not actually keep their responses. We should do some screener questions and we should get rid of their data um, if possible. Um, but inevitably we gather some data from people who aren't in our sample and we neglect to, uh, to get people who are in our sample that may contribute uniqueness to our, our sample, but because we're using a sample instead of a census, we don't capture them. So the extent to which this sample and the population don't match, the extent to which they don't match is an illustration of sampling error. It's error that's in our data as a result of the fact that we're using a sample. Okay, so that's that E that we want to think about um, and how much we're willing to accept, uh, accept in it. Okay, so we have a population mean and our sample mean there. Okay, so um, suppose then we're going to survey a chain of retail stores, kind of like we did before, I guess, um, and we have a 95 percent confidence, so we have an alpha of 0.05, and we're not sure if what the population standard deviation is, but we're willing to accept a total margin of error of 0.5%. Okay, so then what we're going to do is plug those numbers into our equation. We have 1.96 squared, we have 0.5, and then we have 0.5 in there, and then we have 0.05 squared. All right, and so we'll just simply calculate that. Uh, out, we have uh, just, you know, again, just measuring this out, we end up with a sample size of 384. That would be the sample that we need in order to, to do this. Okay, so note some key relationships here. Sample size is going to be positively related to our confidence interval. Okay, how much error you're willing to accept and how much variation is in the population. So uh, that's a big deal. So you need a larger sample if your population is very heterogeneous. Um, you want to avoid the type 1 error and your desire of margin of error is narrow. So you need a larger sample. <clears throat> Again, if there's a, a big standard deviation, um, if you want to avoid the type 1 error, which would be the Z, the Z impact there, and we have a, um, our desire for error is fairly low. All right, so that's kind of where we're there. <clears throat> what does this mean? What, what does the 384 mean? What, what is that? That's, of course, our sample size. And it means that if we use a sample size of 384, that we can say, with 95% confidence that the sample data is measured accurately within 5% of the true population. Okay, that's the that's the statement that we're making as a result of of doing this. Okay, and we can play around and we can add different um, numbers in here. We can you can uh, practice this by changing your Z. You can practice this by changing your acceptable margin of error. Um, this again, this 0.05 is the, um, the, the, the most um, variable your data can be. If you change it, <clears throat> then you'll get something that's actually lower here and it won't be, have as big of an impact um, or higher here and it won't have as much of an impact. Okay, so um, that's two ways for calculating sample size. The confidence interval method, which uses this formula, which is very good to know, um, and then also the rule of thumb. So the rule of thumb of five observations per, um, per uh, item that you have in your survey.